Transmedia is a recent phenomenon which can be seen everywhere. It can be seen across all of the media you consume, it can be seen across commercials on the streets, it can be observed in the music you listen to. What is this phenomenon if it is so unavoidable? That is what this video sets out to both explore and to explain. Whilst transmedia can be explored everywhere, do we need to also understand other concepts and other ideas which ties itself into the concept? I previously made a video on convergence theory, which I recommend those who do not understand what convergence theory is to watch. And if you do not want to watch a video, there is a bibliography in the description. The most important bit of that bibliography is the book Convergence Culture, Where Old and New Media Collide, by Henry Jenkins, who is the discoverer of both cultural convergence and transmedia. And now, with the introduction done, let's jump into the subject. Transmedia was discovered by the famous professor Henry Jenkins, much in the same topic as cultural convergence theory. However, when it comes to transmedia, it is a little bit of a problem when discussing the subject in general. Whilst Henry Jenkins discovered transmedia and wrote up the clarifications and identifications, since then have transmedia theory changed with support and motivation from Henry Jenkins himself. Due to this, let us reference Henry Jenkins on his blog henryjenkins.org on the specific page Transmedia Storytelling 101. Here Jenkins delivered 10 different points. However, we will be focused on, on the first point, specifically the first sentence of the first points. Transmedia storytelling represents a process where integral elements of a fiction gets dispersed systematically across multiple delivery channels for the purpose of creating a unified and coordinated entertainment experience. Ideally, each medium makes its own unique contribution to the unfolding of the story. I've also seen definition which changes fiction and entertainment towards information. To quote Ilka Lettermaki, in its core, transmedia simply means using multiple mediums to relay information. This means that transmedia is not limited to only fictional storytelling. You might wonder why is this relevant? And it is because we can then remove it from entertainment media and pull it into reality to be used in many other contexts. Recently in my shorts I used Arnold Schwarzenegger's career as an example. He started off as a bodybuilder and eventually he switched career to become a movie star and when he peaked in this field he would eventually switch again to become a politician. Throughout his career Schwarzenegger would mix all of his careers, bodybuilding, Hollywood star, politician, into a transmedia story and in this story all of these would become relevant as he would reuse his previous experiences again and again throughout his careers and even still to this day. Interrupting really quickly. Whilst editing the video, the YouTuber Matt Pat decided to retire. It might not be seen as something relevant to the topic, but it is. Matt Pat's entire career is framed around transmedia, engagement and storytelling. YouTube itself is a cultural convergence platform which has been excellently made to create and inhibit transmedia storytelling and engagement. MatPat began his career on this platform as a fan engaging in transmedia engagement and storytelling. His position as a fan would soon change as he became a leading transmedia actor and creator instead. Starting off with his channel Game Theory, where he engaged, story told, and participated in the general transmedia culture of his favorite video games. He would later expand this into film theorists, soon food theorists, and finalizing his career with fashion theorists. And whilst he has remained on the YouTube platform as a transmedia actor throughout his entire career, he has also participated in the movie industry in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and later hosted the Streaming Awards. 
The technological convergence gave him the ability to participate in the cultural convergence in the creation of transmedia, making him a transmedia actor able to participate through engagement, storytelling and creation of new material within this new phenomenon. And now when he retires, it is worth to reflect over what he has created and what he has been enabled to create thanks to these recent phenomena and how he was able to utilize them to their maximum potential to not only create and engage with fandoms and storytelling and media but also to create an entire community around it and to make it an entire career. And now as he retires he's leaving both the community and the media he has interacted with with a rich heritage. And now I will play part of a speech made by Arnold Schwarzenegger which I think representates both of these actors even though they have been widely different from widely different eras and had widely different careers. My legacy is not bodybuilding. It's not a catchphrase or an explosion in one of my movies. It's not even pulling California back from the brink. Now, those are nice stories from what has been a truly extraordinary life. But my legacy, my immortality, is gathering up all of the tools that I use to achieve my extraordinary life and to give them to you. Now, when Letmaki uses the term transmedia, he doesn't mean it in delivering of Schwarzenegger's life story. He means it in the case of delivering history as transmedia storytelling. Whilst Jenkins focuses his writing on transmedia storytelling to inform about Matrix, Star Wars, Conan the Barbarian and many other fictional narratives, Letanamaki wants you to understand that history itself is also transmedia storytelling and all retellings of history as well transmedia storytelling. But what does transmedia storytelling look like? So, let us begin with Conan the Barbarian, written by Robert E. Howard. Paolo Bertetti writes about the beginning of Conan the Barbarian and its history. Howard didn't live a long life, dying at age 30. And during this short life, he was dedicated to historical fiction. He published 16 Conan tales, a book called The Hour of the Dragon, and after his death, four more complete stories was found in his papers. In the 1950s and 60s, three unfinished stories would be published, and eventually the fourth one as well, accompanied with a pseudo-historical essay named the Habarian Age, which would set out the history and geography, setting out what would be the Conan universe, the Habarian Age, tying itself together through transmedia narrative with H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. All of these stories were separate. However, fans reading them started putting up a chronological order. During 1936, the same year, which Howard died, the fans P.S. Miller and J.D. Clark would have written the first chronological order of the Conan universe. When the new edition of Conan the Barbarian was published, they utilized an edited and updated version of the fan-made timeline. The Conan universe has a long history, starting before the author's birth and continuing past his death. Other authors, publishers, corporations and fans would engage themselves into the Conan project and expand it further throughout time. Beginning as a transmedia comic involving itself with the Lovecraftian universe, it would soon expand further into novels and after that it would continue to expand with movies, games, and role-playing games. Today, Conan the Barbarian is available to be consumed, observed, and participated in 
in whichever format you prefer, and you're able to engage it in numerous ways and participate in the ever-expanding universe. Matrix was not made in a vacuum. It too have inspirations from previous projects and previous ideas. You can see, for example, how they took inspirations from the famous Japanese anime Ghost in a Shell and paid homage to Akira, with Morpheus' leather share sharing the same red as Akira's Canada's red leather jacket. And whilst the book Simulacra is held up as the greatest inspiration for the Matrix, we should not forget what the previous medias had done for the genre and what Matrix would do and continue to inspire further works to do. Matrix would, much like the previous work inside the genre and the subsequent later works inspired by Matrix, add more and more to the genre. The collaborative authorship would continue to add more ways to retell the stories, more ways to continue develop the stories, more philosophies and more ways to both handle complex topics and retell them. Matrix would continue to develop its world building through animation, games and further movies. And with this it is important to note that transmedia storytelling isn't just stories copying from each other's or being inspired from each other's like Conan. It is also the development of the genre in its entirety by adding concepts, ideas, and developing upon older concepts and ideas previously presented. Transmedia would allow the whole genre to further develop as it expanded across multiple platforms, multiple formats, and expanding what philosophies, thoughts, and storytelling was within the genre itself. So now we reach the video's conclusion. And here I thought I would also bring up what technological convergence and cultural convergence connects together with transmedia. And for those who knows, they have probably been already able to fit together the puzzle pieces. As technological convergence leads to the complex tool sets to create these medias and to consume these medias come together into the same devices, it makes it easier for consumers to both engage with the media and consume the media. This leads to cultural convergence where multiple cultural and media products takes place on the same devices and it's easier for the user to engage, consume and develop media. What transmedia adds to the theories is that it isn't just easier to engage, consume and create media, it's also easier to create narratives, storytelling, and spread information through multiple media. It also allows the consumers to turn to developers and expanding the media in new and interesting ways, such as how Conan fans developed a new storyline, which was way more engaging and convinced the publishers themselves to change later on. Storytelling is no longer a one-way street from publisher to the people, but it's a two-way street where the people are able to engage back through various means, such as memes, storytelling, retelling, expansion, and new inspired storytelling. The consumer can both consume the media whichever way they want, but they're also able to retell it, develop upon it, and present of new and old media in their preferred way. So what is transmedia? Transmedia is the delivery of storytelling or information through multiple channels. And where is transmedia? It is everywhere. It's your favorite book to read, it's your favorite movie to watch, it's your favorite stream and your favorite song. And if you want to go further, it's everything else you can see, observe, and consume. Thanks for having listened, and have a lovely day.